Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update on this Tuesday. My first stop is to water vapor satellite imagery, pretty similar to this morning if you were watching that update. Uh, this is our main area of low pressure. This is the big game in town. This is the low that's going to come in with the heavy snow potential for the mountains of Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and Colorado. That happens late 1016, 1017. 1018, and then it's probably going to cut off because there's additional energy behind it. Well, the whole thing is being supported by the jet stream. You can see it here and here. Initially, everything's being guided up into the Pacific Northwest in BC, but the whole pattern is going to break. This low will break down the high pressure and move through the Intermountain West, and then it's likely that the low will cut off over the four corners and sit and spin for two additional days, 10, 19, 10, 19, and 10, 20, and that'll really help to crank out some heavy snow for some mountain areas, especially in southwest Colorado. So that's the setup right now on water vapor. Here are my afternoon bullet points. So storm on track for afternoon, evening, 10, 16, mainly 10, 17, and 10, 18 for Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. Then the low gets cut off from the main flow and it ends up sitting over the four corners. New Mexico and Colorado, 1018 to 19, 1020 with some heavy additional precipitation. Uh, and the snow levels are all going to drop um, through the course of the system, but they start quite high, especially in parts of Utah and also in Colorado, but they start at about 11,000 in Utah. So that's going to preclude a lot of areas especially the Wasatch, from seeing significant snow early. The high Uinas, of course, um, should not have a problem accumulating snow early and pretty much throughout the entire storm uh, system. And then the snow levels are going to drop progressively in the Wasatch to about six to 6,500 feet. Um, so it'll go from like rain, rain, snow, and out to snowbird. And let me just take you over to my next slide over to snow. So that will cut down on some of the accumulation if it starts as rain or rain snow, mix it out to snowbird. Um, but then it should still accumulate five or more inches across little and big cottonwood canyons, potentially up to a foot in some places very high up. That's one part of the forecast I think is going to remain in flux and we're going to have to do some adjustments in the coming days. Um, probably um, We'll, we'll certainly know more tomorrow as to what the temperature scheme is going to look like, but that's what it looks like now. In Colorado, the, the bullseye is going to be in the southwest part of the state over the San Juans. So the Chicago Basin, which includes um, a cluster of 14ers there in the heart of the San Juans, high elevation stuff, looking at one to two feet or more. I'll show you those numbers. They're not quite as big as what I showed you this morning, but they're still pretty, pretty big for this time of the year. Granite Peak is, I had to up those numbers for parts of southern Montana, uh, southwest Montana, looking at a foot or more of a granite. Kings Peak still looking at a foot or more. Um, so there's still some big snow here in the forecast. Here's an updated time height forecast for humidity in the atmosphere. And this is for Molas Pass in southwest Colorado over the San Juan Mountains. And um, so your moisture's in green, dry air is in um, your yellows and your oranges. And you read the timeline on the lower portion there from right to left. And so now you can see how all the moisture starts to stack up and move in. The humidity is saturated um, all the way up to about 14, 15, 16,000 feet. So all that moisture is being lifted over the top of the high peaks of Colorado. And that's where we're going to pick up our heaviest snow on the 17th, 18th, and night, especially the 19th. Those are going to be big days and probably on the 20th as well. So we'll continue to look at those forecasts because those take you out about 72 to 80 hours over the coming days. All right, jet stream forecast. So by close of business today, there it is. You can see the dip in the jet rolling in to the Pacific Northwest. Here it comes into the Inner Mountain. There's 1017. You can see the dip. That's the area of low pressure being supported. And that'll run through Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, New Mexico, and eventually Colorado. And there it is. You can start to see it getting cut off from the main flow to the north. So by 1018, 1920, it just sits and spins. Look at it over the top of the four corners, including Colorado, New Mexico. That's why some of the totals there are going to be so much more significant as it just sits there and precipitates. And then by 1021, it's moved away. And then we have to watch to the west to see what else is building over the Pacific. It does look like there's going to be some additional action once we get into probably 1023, 24, 25. Um, it looks like a pretty active end of the month of October as well.
All right, so here's the uh, the forecast radar and the satellite. So by 5.30 today, there's your setup. All right, here comes our storm system. There's 10.16 afternoon. Things just starting to get underway, high snow levels in a lot of places. In other words, a high rain snow line, high elevation. Um, there's 10.17 in the morning. There's 10.17 in the afternoon. Now we start to see that reinforcing area of energy come in behind the main low. And, there, and that will help to reduce or drop the snow level, the rain snow line down in elevation. And then there it is. I mean, you're seeing widespread snow there. This is the morning of 1018 over uh, parts of southern and southwest Montana, parts of Idaho, certainly uh, Wyoming, heavy snow over the top of the Tetons and the Wind River, uh, Wind Rivers, and then heavy snow over parts of the Wasatch, the High Uintas. And then look at Colorado. Here comes the heavier precip right here. And especially once the low cuts off, look at it sit and spin over the four corners. All that heavy snow continues to rotate over western and southwest Colorado and even parts of New Mexico. And then it comes back and before it moves away and then it's done. And then we have to watch and see what's next by everything's sort of moving up into B.C. at this point. But 1024 and to 1025. And like I said, I do think it'll be a pretty active end of October once we get the next trough to move in. OK, snowfall. So this afternoon's update, the numbers look like this. In some places, they have gone a little bit down. In some other places, they've gone up, but you can see the numbers. Potentially a foot or more of a Brian head. Um, I'll zoom into the Wasatch here in a second. Um, probably three to six over the Tetons and probably four to eight in the Wind Rivers. Um, looking at good numbers, like I was saying, over parts of uh, southern and southwest uh, Montana, over Granite Peak, could look at, could be a, a foot or more there. Some pretty good numbers up in the B.C. as well. Look at Marmot Basin, Whistler Blackcomb. Looking at eight or more inches in a lot of those spots. Now, in uh, Utah, so the numbers I had this morning were just a touch higher. But again, these numbers, I'm banking on it being rain or rain snow for about the first third of the storm system, maybe even half. And then it goes over to snow as colder air moves in. Now, these numbers could fluctuate. The, um, if it's colder, if, even if it's just a couple degrees colder, it's likely that we're going to see more snow than what I'm showing here. So we'll have to adjust this. We'll see what it looks like tomorrow with the latest uh, temperature profile. But here's the southwest Colorado forecast. You remember this morning there were a, a couple of 30-inch amounts. The numbers have gone down just a little bit, but they're still uh, they're still looking significant over Wolf Creek and anywhere you see purple is a foot or more. And that's a lot of places, even snow in the valley areas at the tail end of the storm through Durango and Bayfield, you could see two to four inches in those areas. But this is going to be a significant snow. And like I said this morning, we're going to have powder skiing underway in parts of the higher elevations of Silverton Mountain. If this holds, they're going to be sending uh, some amazing powder shots photos of people skiing up there in Silverton Mountain when this is all said and done. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this afternoon mountain weather update. We'll do it again tomorrow morning. I appreciate you tuning in here. Take care.